and there'll be plenty of other uh, professional gamblers or gamblers as you say at the conference as well how much do you say you've learned from from other gamblers over over the years oh everything i just you know one of, one of the favorite the best story ever about gambling for me is it's in the book word for word we did it in the racing post in an off-piste article a few years ago of the day job story in Vegas and it rings true and I'm always astounded by so-called professional winning gamblers who are so obsessed with their own ability to win. Um, I just want to win full stop and if you're a good NRL judge and, and I think you're a good NRL judge and you make it pay I'd want your phone number and I'd want to be ringing you up and add you to my other solid opinions and I there's an algorithm in the book where I've done at Coventry Hour with getting seven top people to price up the dogs completely independently and how strong that was. And um, if I could do that on every sport, <laughs> it wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be great? And that's how I, that's, I, I want to know, I, I want to go with the flow. I want to be with as many shrewd minds as I can. And I like it when we all fancy the same thing. There's a lot of gamblers, I, could, I don't want to name any of them, that. When they really fancy something themselves, they'll go to bed on a Friday night and really be confident and can't wait for it. And then when they wake up and find out everyone else fancies the same dog or the same horse, they sort of get the hump a little bit and, you know, want them to be right. I just want to win. And but do you think that there's a bit of an obsession with, with some gamblers that they, rather than being right, like they want to be right rather than, than perhaps winning, which sounds no, bizarre? No, it's, it's not. It's not. Not if you go grand racing, it's not bizarre. I've seen them, I've seen guys, you know, come out of dog tracks penniless and you know, almost not cared because they, they thought Trap 3 would lead in the fourth race and to the corner and it did. And, um, you know, over a period of time, that, that's not good enough. You have to, you have to be in, in, in the queue to get paid more so, often than that. So yourself, you've obviously experienced a lot more than most people have in the betting world. How, how inclined are you to, to impart your own betting wisdom onto others? Perhaps younger traders, people that are that are starting out with a, perhaps not the same ambitions as you, but, but wanting to, to make a living from, from gambling and trading? Oh, very much so. Uh, especially, uh, I've been a football partner all my, I, I, over 80% of any, all the money I've won is on football. And in running, I mean, I don't even concentrate on the team news now because others do it to a better degree and they're certain to weaknesses. I've just got a natural talent, especially in running for, for, for football. But I'm finding it more and more stressful I've been an unders man all my life and with the way penalties are and the way the rules are, the way football's gone in the last two and a half years, there's no unders people left. Even I'm changing to an overs man and all the rules, everything about football right now, I think it's an ideal time for me to talk to young punters who are ignorantly cashing out and ignorantly betting the wrong way and um, I, I see now as an ideal opportunity for me because I am going to concentrate more on the NRL and we are winning much more on the horses than we are on the, on, on the, on the, the, on the sport at the moment, so, apart from the NRL. So, um, no, there's no there's no reason for me not to be able to take advantage of perhaps the promotion of the book and some of the nights we're doing and, and, and try and help the younger punters about football.